Hey there, Dr. Dickon Weatherby from Optimal DX and the ODX Academy. Welcome to a Functional 5. We're going to be continuing our electrolyte journey by diving into carbon dioxide. We've looked at sodium, we've looked at potassium, we've looked at the sodium-potassium ratio, and last time we looked at chloride, and now we're going to be evaluating CO2. So CO2 is produced in the body by cellular respiration, or basically breathing. And the majority of CO2, about 75%, is produced from that cellular respiration and is carried in the blood as the bicarbonate ion. So what we're really measuring in the, in the serum and what appears on our blood test results when we're looking at CO2 is really the bicarbonate ion. In fact, the uh, Europeans and the Canadians and the Australians, when they're looking at blood results, they don't talk about CO2, they talk about bicarbonate, which is really what we should be looking at here in, in the United States. But anyway, uh, about 75% of the CO2 uh, is carried in the blood as the bicarbonate ion, 5% remains in solution as dissolved CO2, and the remaining 20% uh, is combined with hemoglobin and other plasma proteins. Interestingly enough, dissolved CO2 formed in the lungs contributes little uh, to the serum CO2 value. So one of the reasons why you'd pay attention to serum CO2 is to evaluate for acid-base balance or looking for a trend towards alkalosis or acidosis. And this is kind of where the confusion comes in because when we're looking at CO2, are we talking about bicarbonate or are we talking about the dissolved CO2 in the body? So ideally, we should be referring to CO2 in terms of either CO2 content or CO2 gas. Now, CO2 content refers to that bicarbonate. That's the stuff that we're measuring in the serum. This is an alkaline or a base molecule, and it is regulated by the kidneys. On the other hand, we have CO2 gas, and this refers to that 5% of CO2 that is dissolved in the blood, and this is regulated by the lungs. Now, both the kidneys and the lungs have powerful regulatory capacities in the body. And in fact, when we're looking at the two major systems of the body that regulate pH and acid-base balance, we've got the kidneys and we've got the lungs. And so we've got these two kind of conditions, the metabolic acidosis, metabolic alkalosis, having more to do probably with um, uh, kidney or renal regulation, and then respiratory acidosis and respiratory alkalosis having to do with uh, the, the lungs. Now, it gets complicated very fast. And uh, I do cover this in a little bit more detail in my in-office lab testing book. So if, you're in, if you are interested in kind of diving into this in a bit more detail, learning some in-office tests that you can do, you can look at urine pH, salivary pH, uh, respiratory rate, and breath holding time. And looking at the ratios between those four things can kind of steer you whether or not the patient is moving in an acidosis or an alkalosis, whether we're looking at compensatory respiratory or compensatory uh, kidney stuff going on. So as, as I said, it gets very, very complicated. So go over there if you are at all interested. So let's continue here with our, our journey of acid-base balance. So serum CO2 as that bicarbonate is one of the reserve alkaline elements in the blood. Bicarbonate uh, acts as an acid-base buffer. It neutralizes metabolic acids, such as hydrochloric and lactic acids that appear in the body. While it is not the most sensitive measurement of pH, serum CO2 can be helpful for evaluating a trend towards metabolic acidosis or alkalosis. So in summary here, an elevated level of serum CO2, remembering that bicarbonate, if you have too much of it in the serum, that's contributing towards a trend towards metabolic alkalosis. If you have low levels of CO2, low levels of bicarbonate, now you're trending towards metabolic acidosis. What's happening there is the body is using up that alkali buffer in order to buffer the H plus or the acidic elements in the blood. So that kind of finishes up our quartet of uh, electrolytes here. We will be moving into anion gap next, where we kind of summarize all four of those together in sort of an equation that we call the anion gap. And then I'm going to do a short little presentation on metabolic acidosis and metabolic alkalosis. If you're at all interested in the ODX application, go over to optimaldx.com. 
Um, you can join the free trial. I have a crash course in functional blood chemistry analysis, an eight-day little training, mini training program introducing you to functional blood chemistry analysis and why I think it's one of the most essential functional medicine tests that you can do. So until next time, this is Dr. Dickon Weatherby. Thanks for watching. Take care.